All right, we're going to do it. We're going to prove Wilson's theorem. This is the night. I know you're excited, but we're going to do it. Or whenever you're watching this, you can say this is the day. We are going to prove that for any given prime, the factorial of the, let's say, whatever the number is below that prime on the a natural number system, um, let's say if it's 5, then we're going to prove that 4 factorial, okay, or if it's 7, we're going to prove that 6 factorial, or whatever the factorial is of the number less than that prime, uh, take that factorial, add 1, and you will get a multiple of that prime. So if I take 4 factorial, I, which is 4 is 1 less than 5, okay, 4 factorial is 24, add 1 to 24, I get a multiple of 5, I get 25. Take a factorial of 6 um, and add 1, I get a multiple of 7. Take a factorial of 10, add 1, I get, uh, I get a multiple of 11. So, you think we can do it? I think we can. All right. What do we know? Why do I say that p minus 1 factorial is equivalent to p minus 1 factorial to the power of p in mod p? I know that from, um, from Fermat's little theorem which I did a video on. I uh, got a lot of hits on it, too. Um, that's a popular one. Um, from Oz's little theorem, concisely proven. Uh, but anyways, um, this is our A. Base, it, it, really, the mod P should have been on this side. You, you're going to have to understand that when I do this equivalent sim symbol here, it's going to be in mod P. I wasn't super rigorous about putting mod P where I should have, okay? So I apologize. What this is saying is P minus 1 factorial mod P is equivalent to P minus 1 factorial to the power of P. But we know that P minus 1 factorial is, is mod P. Uh, if We don't have to put mod P here because, um, well, 0 is mod P, so we don't really need it. So this is true in mod P, okay? A is equivalent to um, A, A to the power of P if A is relatively prime to P in, in mod P. Um... Now what do I do here? How do I get from p minus 1 factorial to p minus 2 factorial? Well, I divide by p minus 1. Okay, perfect. It, it, simple. Um, now I'm going to also divide by um, p minus 1 over here. But remember this is in mod p. So this whole thing is in mod p equivalent. So p minus 1 in mod p is also equivalent to negative 1 mod p. So while p minus 1 factorial becomes p minus 2 factorial, I can also over here put a negative sign, and instead of p minus 1 factorial to the power of p, which by the way is also would also be equivalent to p minus 1 factorial mod p, if I had written that out, which I didn't. Uh, but instead of p minus 1 factorial to the power of p, I get negative p minus 1 factorial to the um, power of p, which is equivalent to negative p minus 1 factorial mod p, okay, by Fermat's little theorem. Um, but you don't like having the negative sign over here with mod p. No. No, you're screaming at me through the YouTube, through the computer here, to uh, reverse the order here and put the negative sign over here and have negative p minus 2 factorial is equivalent to drop the negative, p minus 1 factorial to the power of p, which is equivalent to p minus 1 factorial mod p. So you're screaming at me to do that. Note that if I divide p minus 1 factorial to the power of p by p minus 1 factorial, I get p minus 1 factorial to the power of p minus 1. And then if I divide this by p minus 1 factorial, I get 1 mod p. Well, guess what? This follows p minus 1 factorial to the power, to power of p minus 1 is equivalent to 1 mod p. That actually follows from Fermat's little theorem. So I've I've, I've, it shows me I'm on the right track. And I'm going to note it again down here, um, just because I erased a bunch of lines and had it, and so why not just make use of it again. So note that p minus 1 factorial to the power of p minus 1 is equivalent to 1 mod p. I think I put note that based on Fermat's little theorem. So what I probably was doing was just re reinforcing that, that, that it fits. I don't know. I don't remember what I was thinking. But anyways... Um, Something very interesting arises, and that is my p minus 1 factorial to the power of p minus 1. If I multiply that by p minus 1, gets me p minus 1 factorial to the power of p, and then that gets me p minus 1 factorial. So I can bring down the p minus 1 factorial here. This is the same as p minus 1 factorial to the power of p. 
Note that then this one mod p has to be multiplied by p minus one, and that gets me p minus one mod p. Interesting, very interesting indeed, because by the transitive property, I now know that p minus one factorial is equivalent to p minus one mod p, but that's equivalent to negative one mod p, and that's Wilson's theorem, right there, right here, right here affirmed. So we're gonna back up, and I'll hold the paper out here. Sorry about the, the squiggly erasy stuff there. And uh, Wilson's theorem is affirmed. We now know that um, if we have the, fa again, if we have the factorial of the number just below a prime, um, that's going to be equivalent to negative one uh, mod, mod that prime, i.e. if we have the factorial of the number just below a prime, it's gonna be some multiple of that prime minus one. Thank you very much.